All right, we're back to finish our, up our notes on average and instantaneous speed. As we discussed last time, average speed is the, well, average speed over some period of time, while instantaneous speed is the speed at one instant in time. Um, in practice, we find an, uh, the average speed by either using the equation V with a line over it equals D over T, or we find it by finding the slope of a best fit line on some portion of a V versus, or on a D versus T graph, excuse me. Instantaneous speed we find by a process called the midpoint method. And the midpoint method is interesting because it really shows us an average speed but over a very, very small period of time. It's actually impossible to find the exact instantaneous speed at some point in time. Um, so what we do instead is we cheat a little bit by finding the average speed over a very, very, very small period of time. We saw in the first graph example that if all of the data points lie directly on the line of best fit, then the average speed over that period is equal to the instantaneous speed at every point. So if you have a graph, uh, a section of a graph that is a straight line, um, then you know on that section that the average speed is equal to the instantaneous speed. As soon as the slope starts changing, however, then that is not the case anymore. What we're going to look at now is a case where we do have something a little bit different than that. We have a not everything, or not all the data points in this next example are in a straight line. You can see that the first three or so form one line, the others deviate off of that. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're still going to draw a best fit line for the entire section of this data. And that's going to look approximately, oh, we'll say approximately like this. Somewhere, I'd say right about there. So let's draw this. All right. I guess it could be up a little bit higher, but for our purposes, this is going to be pretty good to use. Okay? So... Uh, it says draw a best fit line and write the equation of the line below. Well, in order to do that, we need to know what the slope shows us. We know that on a D versus T graph, distance versus time, the slope shows us the speed. The slope literally represents the speed. Whatever the slope is, is the average speed of that object. I should say the slope represents average speed. So the slope equals V with a hat over it. And that's equal to, let's see, I just need two points that are on my slope. So I'm going to choose, let's see here, got to pick some good ones. Um, I'm going to choose this point right here, not the data point. That data point's not on the line, but right below it, because that, that it seems like the line crosses right at that intersection. And I'm also going to choose, okay, right here. Again, I not the data point. I don't have to choose the data points themselves. I can choose points just on the line. Um, and I'm choosing not to use data points for this one. You can if you want, but you don't have to. No matter what, though, the point does, whatever points you choose for the slope calculation have to be on the best fit line. So my points that I chose, this one appears to be at about 4 seconds and 8 meters. This one's at about 2.4 seconds and 6 meters. So y2 minus y1 is just going to be 8m minus 6m. x2 minus x1 is going to be 4 seconds minus 2.4 seconds. That's going to give us 2 over 1.6, which gives us 1.25 meters per second. Okay? So my equation for the best fit line is y equals the slope, 1.25 meters per second, times x, plus the y-intercept. That looks like it falls, well, if 3 is up here, this is kind of halfway in between, I'm going to say 2.5. Okay? And the units on that would be meters. So we know that the average speed of this object is 1.25 meters per second. Let's see if the instantaneous speeds match up with that. Let's calculate the instantaneous speeds at 0.5 seconds and 3 seconds. Here's 0.5 seconds, here's 3 seconds. Remember, the midpoint method requires me to, do, to look at, for the midpoint method, the points just after and just before. Because essentially what we're doing is we're finding like a little mini slope between the two points around the point in question. And what that should show us is the average speed at this time, which if we use small enough intervals like we are here, is about equivalent to an ins a true instantaneous speed. So at t equals 0 0.5 seconds, I use the midpoint method and I discover the following. 
right after this point, the, okay, let's see, so the, um, the distance right after this point appears to be about, I'm going to say 3.8 meters, and the distance right before it is a little bit above 3, I'm going to call it 3.4. And I apologize for these lines being so hard to read. Um, but trust me, those are the numbers that I used. And the times are very easy, one second and zero seconds. So I know the bottom is just one, so this is just going to come out to be whatever the difference between these two is. I get 0 0.4 meters per second. Okay. Now notice that the instantaneous speed here is much lower than my average speed over the entire thing. That's interesting. Let's do the instantaneous speed at three seconds. At three seconds, that's looking at this data point and this data point, I have approximately, um, looks like about 7.8 meters minus, it's, call, it's a little bit above the six line, so let's call it 6.2 meters over 3.5 seconds and 2.5 seconds. 7.8 minus 6.2 is 1.6, 3.5 minus 2.5 is 1, so the instantaneous speed here is 1.6 meters per second. So notice that these instantaneous speeds do not have to be the same as the average speed. And as a matter of fact, you can probably guess as to why that is. If we look at the first section of data, which contains the data points around 0.5 seconds, if I were to draw a line connecting those data points, the slope is shallower than our average speed slope, the slope of our best fit line for all the data points. So since slope represents speed, or average speed specifically, the, the slope between these points shows us that the instantaneous speed there should be lower than the average speed because the slope is smaller. On the other hand, around three seconds, that slope is slightly larger but the line between uh, 2.5 seconds and 3.5 seconds would have a slope that's slightly larger than our best fit lines slope. So that means the instantaneous speed should be a little bit bigger. Okay, So instantaneous speed does not necessarily have to be the same as the average speed, and in a lot of times it's not. So another takeaway from this is that when we change the slope from here to here, we change the instantaneous speed. So a changing slope of a distance versus time graph means that the speed is changing. On the first graph, we wrote down that if we had a constant slope, that meant that the speed was constant. Now we know if we have a changing slope, that means the speed is changing. It makes sense. The first two graphs, though, neither of those are realistic. They're not realistic graphs because they show data that is too perfect, too straight line. In reality, Gra uh, a graph of motion will look a lot more like this, where the data points are kind of uh, a little bit all over the place, but they still form a line. Matter of fact, on your lab, you've probably noticed that your data looks more like this than either of the first two. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a best fit line, write the equation of the line below. My best fit line, I'm going to say, is about, uh, get about there. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope of that line, which again represents the average speed. Uh, let's see, what points am I going to use? I'm going to use, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to use this point right here. And I'm going to use this point right here. Now again, I could use data points if the line goes right through it, but I just want to show you that you don't have to do that. So this point is at 8.6 seconds, and looks like about 2.8 meters. And my previous point is at 3.8 seconds. And say 1.7 meters. So 2.8 minus 1.7 is 1.1. 8.6 minus 3.8 is 4.8. 
I divide 1.1 minus, or excuse me, divided by 4.8, and I get 0 0.23 meters per second. So I get y equals 0 0.23 meters per second, x, and the y-intercept looks to be about 0 0.8, so plus 0 0.8 meters. So the average speed is 0 0.23 meters per second. We should expect, since there's not a ton of variation in the data points, we should expect that the instantaneous speeds are similar to that, but do we expect necessarily them to be right on 0 0.23 meters per second? Probably not, but it should be around that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill out this table and find the instantaneous speeds at all the data points. So we're going to have 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, 6, 7, 8, 9. And here we're going to see the limits to where, to what data, what sort of data instantaneous speeds can generate for you. Let's try for uh, the point at 1 second. Now, the point before that is at two seconds. There is no data point, or excuse me, the point after that is at t uh, time of two seconds. There is no data point before it. And in the midpoint method, you need a data point before uh, and a data point after in order to calculate it. So actually, at one second, the midpoint method does not allow us to calculate an instantaneous speed. So you can just write, you can't find this. And again, the reason for that is we have no data from before this time, so we can't use the midpoint method. Something similar will happen at 9 seconds. We don't have any data after that. We have a best fit line, but that's not data. That's, our, that's us analyzing the data. Okay? So we can't find the instantaneous speeds at 1 and 9 seconds. All the other times, though, we should be able to find the speeds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make, I'm going to make all these calculations. You can pause the video or calculate along with me, and then we're going to fill in the instantaneous speed table. So I'm going to be quiet for a little bit and I'm going to do these calculations. Notice that it's a two second uh, interval that you'll be finding uh, the, for the time on each of them because e the data point before and after a certain data point, there's always a gap of two seconds in between.
Okay. So as you'll see, the instantaneous speed seems to vary a little bit as time goes on, but it never really goes too far away from our average speed, which makes sense because all these data points are relatively close to that line. However, we see that this shows that the instantaneous speed for this graph does vary a little bit. In reality, what this probably reflects more than anything are is random error and just uh, other really, really small mistakes and measurement uncertainty, okay? This object can be considered to be a, been moving at fairly constant velocity, but we see that random error and the data taking process just kind of shows that we don't, always, we don't quite get a nice perfect line, but we get something that's fairly close, okay? The nicest thing about, find, about using the midpoint method and finding the, is, these instantaneous speeds is that now we can use the instantaneous speeds to make a different graph. We can now make an, a graph of instantaneous speed versus time. And as a matter of fact, that's what you're going to be doing on your next lab. You're gonna take your old data for distance and time and you're going to use it to calculate instantaneous speeds and then you're going, to find, you're going to make a graph of these speed versus time, and then we're going to analyze that graph. Okay? So that's it for this video. Um, I'll be back with some more stuff soon. Until then, see you later.